Sports Fountain, brought to you by Three Willikers, Route 184 in Groton, and New England Home Video, 990 Paquanic Road, also in Groton. And now down to the field, here's Sam Gingerella and Bill Donovan. School Sam Gingerella, Bill Bobo Donovan here. We're a little bit late because of the inclement weather conditions. They haven't much mu missed much action, though, Bobo. And 11.24 to go, we've had one play from the line of scrimmage. That was Mike Quagan, who picked up 20 yards and a first down. On second down, it's Quagan once again, and this time hit right at the line of scrimmage. Well, here we are, uh, Bill. Our second game on Stora Cable. This one between the legend uh, Colonels and the Fitch Falcons. Of course, Fitch last week defeated uh, the Waterford Lancers in better weather at their home field, door field in Groton. This is going to be a little sloppy today, big guy. Well, the field conditions will be a little bit sloppy as the game progresses. Ledger 3-0, and all. Fitch Falcons are 2-2 two two on the season. All right, 10.49 to go. It's a second down, and we'll call it nine yards to go from the 45-yard line. The handoff goes to Daggett, and Daggett has first down yardage as he takes it across midfield down to the 45-yard line, and that's going to be good for a first down. Second first down of the ball game for the Ledger Colonels, and look for the... Uh, Colonels to go to Mike Quaig and number 44 and Mike Daggett uh, throughout most of the morning, number 36. I'm sure they'll uh, try to keep it on the ground if they can. In this kind of uh, wet weather, it's kind of tough to throw the football. And providing us with stats today, Matt Pirtle of the Norwich Bulletin. Wide out to the near side as it's first and 10 from the 45-yard line of the Fitch Falcons. Here's Daggett again trying to get outside, cuts it back upfield and picks up two or three yards down near the 40-yard line. So the Colonels on their first possession in Fitch Falcon territory. So far this year, Legend has defeated St. Bernard, Stonington, and Killingly. And for the Fitch Falcons, interesting, Sam, they've lost every other week. They lost to West Haven, then defeated East Lyme, lost to Hamden, and then, as you mentioned, last week defeated the Waterford Lancers. So if they hold true to form, they're going to lose this one. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't want to say that, but I guess you can <laughs> infer that. <laughs> okay. All right, it's uh, second down. We'll call it about five, forcing up over the football. Wide out to the far side. He's going to throw down the middle. He's got Daggett. And Daggett was running over. He may go. Mike Daggett's going to score from 45 yards out. Penalty on a play, though. A flag down. We'll have to check it out. But they strike with only uh, three minutes gone in the first quarter. Bobo. And with the running game established with both Quagan and Daggett running at will, uh, very infrequently, where you see the Ledger Colonel's pass was a good call that time by Bill Mignall and the coaching staff. Unfortunately, it's going to be brought back. Yep, it's going to be brought back. You saw the official, the illegal procedure call will cost the Colonel's five, but more importantly, Bill, it'll cost him a touchdown. And what also very often happens, though, is if you have a hold or a penalty right at the line of scrimmage, that's what opens up and makes the play. Well, Hurricane Lily uh, is now a tropical storm as we speak, Bo, and uh, we're not supposed to get too much of the effects, but we are seeing some of the rain that's being spawned from that tropical storm. And I can remember two conversations with Bill Mignault. Yesterday he told me that uh, they wouldn't cancel a game today, and this morning he told me it never rains here in Ledger. <laughs> okay. John Shepard wide out to the near side. Scott Bonsell in the slot, and a handoff goes to Quagan. And as you can see, he just squirts forward for a couple. Good second effort by a Big Mike. We got a good call. Uh, Colonel's trying to recoup from having that touchdown play call back, go right back up the middle, reestablish the offensive line, and let's see what happens here on a long third down. Third down, and we'll call it uh, seven yards to go into the ball game. Dan Pogany. For the Colonels, wide out to the near side again. It's John Shepard. Third down and a passing down. Seven yards to go. Back to throw Forson. Throws it down the far sideline and completes it. And out of bounds at about the 25-yard line goes number 89, John Shepard. But a flag is thrown away on that play. Flag right at the uh, reception area. So it would be interesting to see whether the offense was pushing or the defense was pushing. And they say that was Clanton now. So it's Clanton with the reception. 88, not 89. Tough to see through the raindrops that are pitter-pattering down here on our uh, windshield, as it were, Paul. Also a good call on third and seven. The pass play worked the first time he attempted it. Uh, touchdown call back, so that time again, the receiver's wide open. 
849 to go first quarter the colonels have already had one touchdown call back on a legal procedure play and now they're knocking on the door again at about the 15 yard line it'll be first down and 10. let's make that the 10 yard line tough to see on that field right now so it appears it was defensive uh, interference the reception was good so that the colonels will have a first down all right at the 10 yard line first and goal just inside the 10. there you see forson looking over that defense on first and goal looks like somebody boom but no it's handed off to daggett daggett breaking tackles inside the five down near the one yard line good running by mike daggett so the with daggett and quagan in the backfield look for the colonels to keep the ball on the ground and try to run it in for the score second and goal And now the Falcons send in some beef. Number 75 coming in on that front wall for the Fitch Falcons. And that is uh, Randy Wade. He's a 6'1", 215 pounder, so they're beefing up that front wall. Pro set in the backfield, handoff to Quagan, and Quagan down inside the five to about the, well, we'll call it the four, maybe the three yard line. So it'll be second, uh, third down now, and goal. And what do we got? About two yards to go for the touchdown, Bobo. Second down and a couple of yards. Uh, again, look for the Colonels to keep the ball on the ground. 8.07 to go here in the first quarter. Take a look at some of our upcoming games that we'll have. We'll be back here again next week. The game time, East Lime will be here at Ledger, but uh, probably because of SATs, game will be a 1.30 in the afternoon game. It'll be a little easier for us, huh, Sam? Yeah, get the, uh, the dust out of our eyes and uh, the sleep out of our eyes, as it were. Second, uh, third down now. Forson brings the troops up to the line of scrimmage. Third and goal from the three-yard line. The handoff to Quagan, and Quagan is in from three yards out. Mike Quagan goes in for the score with 7.54 to go, and the Ledger Colonels break out on top. By a score of six to nothing with the extra point coming. Dan Forson, he's an all-around dude. He's going to kick the, the extra point as well. So Take home a movie from New England Home Video. That's 990 Pequannock Road, Groton, where the family can choose from over 10,000 movies, including all the newest and hottest releases. New England Home Video is uh, co-sponsoring today's game. And oh. for the legend Colonels on their first possession, 73 yards, nine plays, four minutes off the clock. All right, they're going to go for two in this rain-soaked uh, field. So going for the two-point conversion, Forson back to throw. Got a man open in the corner of the end zone, but he didn't hit him. Incomplete. So the extra point is no good, and we've got seven minutes and 54 seconds to go here in the first quarter at Legend High School with your score, the Legend Colonel, six, and the Fitch Falcons, nothing. We're going to keep it here, it appears, Bobo. Well, a good opening drive for the Falcons as they take it right down the field. They actually scored twice on that drive. And from having seen Ledger in the past, I'm surprised that, uh, especially with the extra point, that they did go to the air, but Bill Mignall must be feeling his team is going to score more than one touchdown today. But, again, the combination of uh, Quagan and Daggett in the backfield, quarterback able to throw, offensive line looks uh, excellent. And uh, as we look over at the <laughs> far side, we see the Ledger band in the middle of the ledger stands but again because of the weather today uh, even with the three and oh team sam not, yeah, not much of a crowd not uh, not too much indeed not too much on the near side either as we saw uh taking care of the weather conditions there a little uh wetness on the camera there i guess and maybe a late arriving crowd as the uh, sun late starts to break through here late arriving no that's just in l.a bobo all right did you see the fitch falcons are deployed ready to receive the kickoff after the ledger colonel touchdown and here's the boot by Mike Quagan. It's a short end-over-end -end job fielded at the 35-yard line by number 25 for the Falcons. And that is uh, John Payow. And he gets it out to about the 40-yard line. So a good field position for the Fitch Falcons as Jonathan Payow picks up the short kick by Quagan. And we get our first look this morning at the Fitch Falcon offense. All right, let's set it for you, Bobo. At quarterback number 11, Kevin Lowry. In the backfield, 29, George Johns. Number 31, Joe Lydon is the fullback. Anthony Hall, number 45, is 
the halfback. The wingman is Kevin, uh, the tight end rather, is Kevin Keating, and the split end is number 30, Eric Baldos. Kevin Keating, number 88, the tight end. We'll uh, set the rest of that offensive line for you in just a second. First and 10, the ball handed off to Johns. He picks up a couple before he's met by that front wall of the legend colonels. Clanton and Alan Glatz make the stop for uh, the legend colonels. Pick up of just about three, at least second and seven. And we're also going to look at uh, the Ledger defense for the first time. And again, they are uh, undefeated this year. Ledger Colonels with a record of 3-0. and Into the ball game now, number 15 is Bobby Willard, who had a whale of a game last week against the uh, Waterford Lancers. Kicked a 30-yard field goal, had a couple of receptions. An excellent game, and he's in the ball game right now. Back to throw now. Kevin Lowry sprinting out to the far side. Has some pressure, and he's going to be hit and sacked by Clanton. And Clanton came all the way from the other side of the field to make the stop. A great job of uh, coming from the backside that time, Bobo, to uh, catch up with Kevin Lowry, who didn't even see him. Missed block that time. Clanton, as you mentioned, went from his right to his left to make the sack, and Pitch offense will have to make the adjustment there because uh, there was time enough to throw the ball except Clanton got by his uh, defender. Clanton, a great uh, job of pursuit there. And Richard Twilley is into the ball game for the first time. Coming out is Kevin Keating on second, uh, excuse me, third down and 11 for the Pitch Falcons. Kevin Lowry on a passing down. He has a straight eye in the backfield. Split out to, uh, wide out to the far side. And they go with that wing back reverse and that's not going to fool anyone as it's plowed under right at the line of scrimmage. And anyone that knows Ledger Colonel football knows that uh, you're not going to make too much uh, ground gain on the uh, running up the middle against the Colonels. And Bobby Willard will have to kick it away. Upcoming schedule on Channel 36. As we mentioned, next week we'll be at here again at Ledger against East Lyme. Then we go over to Stonington as Montville will take on Stonington. Ledger at New London, New London at Stonington, and Thanksgiving, Stonington at Westerly. All right, back uh, deep to kick it away. The Falcons from their own 40-yard uh, line. A low driving kick, the kind you can't return, but it hits on the hop at the 20. Now picked up inside the 10, 15-yard line is number 21, Scott uh, Bonzal. And he returns it back to about the 25-yard line. And we notice our first effects of the slippery field on that play, Sam. Not only that, but this old Scotso had a little bit of trouble trying to pick that one up. Mike Murphy was the punter on that play for the Falcons. I think I said uh, that Bobby Willard was back deep, but Bobby's the extra point and the field goal man. 5-14 to go, first quarter. Ledger leading it 6 to nothing, and they have the football, and they've dominated things here in the first quarter under these adverse conditions. Second possession of the ball game for the Colonels, and they go right up the gut again. Mike Quaggan. Excuse me, that's ja Daggett. Pick up of a couple. And the Colonels on their first possession, in case you just tuned in, took the ball nine plays, 73 yards, and scored. Used up four minutes on the clock, so they lead it, as Sam mentioned, six to nothing, early stages of the first quarter. Four minutes, 36 seconds to go on the clock rolling here at Wet Legend High School. Forcing on second down, and we'll call it 10 from the 25. Turns and hands it to uh, Quagan. And boy, I tell you, he lost yardage on that play as Keating was there first. And he had some help from Twilly and Mike Murphy. Looked like a bit of a mix-up in the backfield that time. Big play here for the Fitch Falcon defense as they have an opportunity to try to hold the Ledger Colonels and force them to punt deep in their own territory. Joe Lydon was there defensively for the Falcons as well. And it's third down now and still very long yardage. Third and 11, just inside their own 25-yard line. I'm sure the Falcons would like to pin them back deep and uh, maybe get some field position out after this punt. It looks like the Falcon defense has made some adjustments. Third down and 11. Back to throw force and got some pressure, steps into the pocket, releases down the middle, and almost picked off by Bobby Willard. Willard is a heck of an athlete. He plays soccer as well. We mentioned last week had a whale of a ball game, kicked a 30-yard field goal ball that would have been good from 40. And he had a couple of receptions, made a couple of key tackles, and here he almost picks one off. Bobby Willard again had an opportunity to, to catch that ball. I'm sure he'd like to have the chance back. Had about 25, 30 yards clear sailing in front of him had he come up with the interception. You're right. Down that, that far sideline was wide, wide open. Back deep for the Falcons, number 12, Jeff Delos Reyes to receive the punt. 
by the legend colonel. And Forson back there gets it off. It's a low wobbly kick. It'll hit at the 45 or six yard line and then take a falcon roll back about another yard. So at about uh, the 46 yard line, it'll be first and 10 for the Fitch Falcons. 3.35 to go here in the first quarter. Six to nothing, you score. The legend colonel's leading it on about a two yard jaunt by number 44, Mike Quagan into the end zone. They actually scored twice. Daggett on the pass reception was called back on the illegal procedure play. That was about a 45 yarder. And then uh, they were able to pick up the first down, drive it down the field, and Quagan scored from two yards out. Second opportunity for the Fitch Falcon offense. First and 10 from their own 46 yard line. It's wet, believe me, folks. It's going to get slippery before this one's over, and somebody jumps, and it's just going to be a matter of whether it was a Falcon that moved first because you saw the defensive man make contact, and it was either the offensive guard on that side or tackle who jumped and pulled across uh, Jason Gorman from that far defensive tackle position on the far side of the field, and that'll cost the Fitch Falcons five yards and Bobo. The way they've been struggling early, they can't afford a, a penalty on first uh, down. For a while, I thought it was a great play by the Falcons. I thought they had a delayed count to try to draw a uh, ledger offside, but it was not the case. Marcus Clack into the ball game. He's wide out to the near side, and they hand it off to the big fullback, Joe Lydon. And Lydon picks up, oh, two or three yards of that penalty, but does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second down and still about, uh, maybe, well, call it 13 yards. And as we mentioned in the first possession that the Pitch Falcons had uh, to run the ball against the Colonels up the middle is difficult, so that uh, we're going to have to see some sweeps or some passing to open it up a little bit. Eric Baldos back into the ball game for Clack as head coach Mike Ellis uh, platooning here, running plays in from the sidelines. 2.32 to go. Second down, 13 from the Maroon 44. The Pitch Falcons trailing 6 to nothing. The pitch out goes on the turf and picked up nicely by Johns, but he's going to be trapped in the backfield. Good play by Johns. They're just to hang out of the football. David Rack and uh, James Clanton made the stop for the Colonels. But I'll tell you what, that was a dangerous play. So Sam, when you look at this legend Colonel team and look at the record and look at the fact that they've defeated St. Bernard, Stonington, and Killingly, all three good teams, we've got to look at our broadcast on November 3rd when Ledger will take on New London at New London. That'll be a big ball game. Very interesting one, I'm sure. One minute, 48 seconds to go here in the first quarter. A loss on the play of a couple. Third down, 13. The handoff to Johns. He's got some running room as they ran a sprint draw and, and surprised the Colonels. He gets about five or six yards, but it's going to be far short of a first down. But they uh, seem like they, had, they caught the uh, Colonel defense a little bit uh, off guard with that uh, sprint draw, but not enough for the first. Shows some quickness, but again, the secondary on that uh, alleged Colonel defensive line was able to stop him. Uh, for a little bit of a game. All right, back to punt is Murphy again from his own, uh, we'll call it for 35 yard line, a good snap. He gets it away, high wobbly kick coming down to about the 15 yard line. Running, returning to the far sideline is number 21, uh, Bonsal. And he returns it to, to what, just about the 22 yard line, Bobo? Yeah, and what you've got to do is you've got to tell your defenders on this particular play that the ball is slippery, go down and hit hard, and perhaps you can pick the ball up and, and take advantage of a punting situation. So the Colonels will have it for the third time here in the first quarter. Just outside their own 20-yard line. They roll the clock and warn to a minute to go here in the first quarter. Ball game co-sponsored by New England Home Video. Stop by. We're in a couple of those hot titles. Here's the handoff to Daggett. Daggett, good yardage, Bobo. Almost to the first down sticks. And it has to be the Mike show. Mike Daggett, Mike Quake, and Quagan scored earlier on a two-yard run. First possession for the Colonels. The Mike and Mike show, huh? The Mike and Mike. Sounds good to me, M&M. &M. 43 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Colonels leading it, six to nothing. Hope you're enjoying this one on uh, cable channel 36. Jack McDonald will rejoin us next week. Maybe we'll get the whole crew back back for one of these broadcasts, Bobo. Tight in the backfield. The handoff goes to, uh, I think that's Quagan again. For short yardage. Kind of a curious call there, Bobo, as they brought everybody in tight and just went for a short yardage play there. Kind of strange call, don't you think? 
Well, you can't question the, the master, Bill Mugnall. I'm sure he's doing a uh, great job uh, mixing the plays up. So it's just a situation where we are uh, going to watch what they do. But uh, they've been able to open up the running game. They've been able to pass at will. And uh, that first quarter, which has just ended, dominated by the Colonels. If you're dining out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, try G. Willikers, Southeastern Connecticut's most popular eatery, featuring an extensive 16-page menu with daily specials, casual dining, and reasonable prices. It will make you say G. Willikers. Route 184 in Groton. We'll have more football action after that. All in all, not too bad. Field conditions are not that unbelievable, considering the rain we've had. Well, when you think that it's October and the grass is still green, apparently the field is taking the water pretty well. Oh, uh, yeah, but it is rather mild today. Temperature's got to be close to 70 degrees. Getting a bit breezy, though, as we look uh, to the far side. The flag is now was draped around the pole. Now it's picking up from... Uh, our right to our left that's behind the, f the uh, ledger colonels now so they'll have the wind advantage here in the second quarter as you can hear the Fitch Falcon marching band in the background here's the cross buck to uh, Bonsell and he gets it out across the uh, 40 yard line out near the 45 a pickup of uh, about three or four that'll bring up third down and uh, a long three short four Bonsell, the favorite pass receiver for the Ledger Colonels, also gets the ball as uh, we just saw on that play on the on end around. But look for uh, Clanton, Quagan again, and Daggett as the uh, favorite running backs for the Ledger Colonels. Third down, and we'll call it four yards to go for the Colonels from their own 34-yard line. The Colonels clad in their home black with the uh, gold pants and the piping down the side. A handoff goes to Daggett, and Daggett's got a first down and more. He may go. Look at that. Coast to coast. Wire to wire. Daggett from 45, 55 yards away. Mike Daggett makes it 12 to nothing. Just like that, he just broke the defense, and once he cut it to the outside, nobody was going to catch him, Bobo. Great blocking up the middle. Good speed. Broke to his left. And it was just a matter of whether or not he was going to catch him and uh, showed the good speed. So no problem at all. And the uh, Ledger Colonel band happy over there. Oh, yeah. Well, they got to love it as they're up 12 to nothing. With the extra point attempt coming. 11.08 to go in the second quarter. Bo? Be interesting to see this time if they go in the air, they uh, show us a kicking game. Well, I'm sure they'd like to get two points on the board and make it 14 and even things out. And they are going to go for two points. Dan Forson. Back to throw. Down the near sideline. Got a man open. That looked like the same play they ran the last time, Bo. And again, it uh, fails. So twice they've run a, almost exactly the same play and with the same result. So uh, incomplete pass on both extra point attempts. And it's only it's 12 to nothing. Of and 14. 12 to nothing on that touchdown drive took a minute 54 second only four plays 73 yards and you saw the exciting touchdown run showed some good quickness yeah Mike Daggett once he broke it into the secondary just outran that Falcon defense for the touchdown to make it 12 to nothing 11 08 to go here in the first half so Mike Daggett and Mike Quagan both on the boards with touchdowns this morning for the legend Colonels and I'm sure we're going to see a little bit more of that, but what the uh, correction, what the Colonels are going to have to work on uh, looking forward to that big uh, big game against New London are their extra point attempts. Getting ready for the ensuing kick, 11 away to go, second quarter. The Fitch Falcons a uh, little bit shell-shocked here as they've been scored upon twice. They led the uh, Waterford Lancers by a score of 17 to nothing into the third quarter and then the Lancers came charging back. So the last few quarters, the half of the third quarter of the Waterford game and the fourth quarter, they've been dominated. All right, here's the kick by Quig and again, it's a short end over end job taken by Johns at the 20. George Johns with some running room, trying to get to the outside and find his blockers. And finally knocked off his pins close to the 45 yard line. Was that Johns or Jason Teague? I think it was Teague. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats compliments of Matt Pirtle of the Norwich Bolton. For the Fitch Falcons, only gained nine yards on six running attempts. 
no first downs. For the legend Colonel, Mike Quagan, six carries, 24 yards. Mike Daggett, three carries for 16 yards. And for Forson, one out of two for 29 yards. Six first downs for the legend Colonels in that first quarter. So you can see they're dominating this football game and doing it on the ground. Now we've got an official timeout on the field. I'd like to remind you to take home a movie from New England Home Video. That's 990 Pequannock Road in Groton, where the family can choose from over 10,000 movies, including all the new, hottest releases. I'm sure you'll be over there tonight, right, Bobo? And with that long touchdown. On the way home? I'll pick up two on the way home. Okay. I'll be over with the popcorn. All right. And a matter of fact, they might want to get some popcorn and uh, watch this broadcast <laughs> on Story Cable 36. There and you go. What I'm thinking of also, uh, Sam, is Mike Daggett, I'm sure, is looking forward to that 100-yard game today. Oh, I'm sure he is. Don't know whether he'll get it or not, but I'm sure he's, uh, well, he, he would like to. 16 yards in the first quarter, that uh, long touchdown run, so he's uh, three-quarters of the way there already. With the uh, timeout on the field, 10.47 to go, 12 to nothing. The score, the legend Colonels leading in here early in the second quarter of play. And is it my imagination or is it getting darker? <laughs> I don't know if it, if it can get any worse. The w wind is whipping up, the rain coming down. This, is, this, is, this reminds me of old time football, though, Bo. You got the natural turf, you got the rain coming down. This is get sloppy, dirty football. And once you're wet, you're wet. And uh, the <laughs> fans that are here knew that there was going to rain. And Bill Mignall, of course, would admit to it. but. Hey, this is going to be a knock them out drag them out uh, rough, tough game here today in the rain. And then you get a look at those pits from down and dirty right alongside. That's what it looks like <laughs> from the field level. Little delay of the game that time. Well, I'll tell you what, no excuse for that because the, the Falcons had a timeout. And we've got to send at least one more week of free sports channel out to Matt for his uh, stats of the, the game today. Free sports channel, huh? Free sports channel. My goodness. How do I get in on that? Well, first of all, you've got to move down to this area. That, that would help. First and five, so we, we'll have to check the penalty. First and five, the handoff goes to Johns. He's going to lose half of that penalty yardage as he's hit in the backfield. Great defensive play and great penetration by the right side of that defensive line. Their first, I believe, is uh, Clanton once again, number 88, James Clanton. And uh, Glatz was there as well, so great defense and for the... Uh, Falcons, Falcons are looking for their first first down of the morning. Ooh. So things have been a little bit slow for that uh, pitch Falcon offense. It's been dark and gloomy, and it's <laughs> dark and gloomy for the uh, Falcons as well offensively. A handoff up the middle. Excuse me. The fake handoff and back to throw when Lowry, and he is sacked behind the line of scrimmage. So things going in reverse now for the Falcons as the rain really begins to pelt down, and that wind is picking up. Hello, Lily. Yeah, looking like the uh, back end of a, a hurricane with the dark skies, the clouds moving the way they are, and just a little spitting of the rain coming down, but I'm sure it's aggravating to the people outside. I'm sure that wind in the face of the Falcons also aggravating as now they're going to uh, face a third down and about 12. This is uh, certainly a passing down. Let's see what they do with it. Now they're going to pitch it out to Johns on the far side. John's going to be tracked down by 57 Allen Glatz once again. Far short of the first down, and the Falcons will have to kick it away. And here come the rain. Legend Colonels lead it 12 to nothing. They don't postpone football games because of the rain, do they? Well, they don't in Legend. <laughs> Get an arc, somebody. Where is Noah when you need him? 9.02 to go. This is almost like a night game now, Bobo. Murphy back to kick. He gets it underway. High wobbly kick. Fielded by Bonsal. He's trying to find some running room. He breaks in the clear. Bonsal may go all the way. Yes, indeedy. He's got a convoy, and he's going to go all the way for the, for the touchdown. Scott Bonsal, where did he pick that? About the 40-yard line. About a 60-yard return by Scott Bonsal for the touchdown. I don't see a flag anywhere. It'll count. So third opportunity for Bonsell to return the punt. Today he busted it for the touchdown, and he's not feeling the effects of the rain and uh, cold weather and slippery ball. Well, I tell you, just as he received that football, the rain just came down in monsoon fashion, and he just gathered it in nice and uh, easy. And 
scamper down the near sideline, 69 yards, touchdown, it's 18 to nothing. So the question now is, will the Colonels keep it on the ground as they go for the extra point? The question now is, will they, uh, will they call off the dorks and put in some, uh, some second stringers? They're going to go for the two-point conversion once again. Let's see if they run that same play. No, they hand it off this time to Quagan, I believe. Excuse me, that's Daggett. And once again, it's uh, he stopped short of the goal line, so the extra point attempt is no good. If you're dining out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, try G. Williker, Southeastern Connecticut's most popular eatery, featuring an extensive 16-page menu with daily specials, casual dining, and reasonable prices. It will make you say G. Williker, Route 184. <laughs> Well, 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 ladies and gents. It is certainly getting interesting outside. The rain is pelting down. The wind has picked up dramatically since we left. 8.41 to go. And this, I think, is the worst I've seen it for a football game. It's like tornado-type winds and driven rain, so that uh, it's going to be an interesting morning here as we still have 8.41 left in the second quarter. So we've got a whole second half and the majority of uh, this quarter to go. And look at this, to have to hold a kickoff. That's right. <laughs> you can tell how sloppy it is down there by that shot. As the Colonels deploy, getting ready to kick it off. Could get kind of sloppy out there. These kids are never going to forget this game. I don't think so. Here's the kick by Quig and another short one. And they're just going to handle it and fall down right at the 40-yard line, about the 39. 8.38 to go. Has there ever been a, a, a case where a high school game was called like at halftime or something? Oh, they have to play this one. They have to finish this out, don't they? Well, yeah, once they've started, uh, unless it really gets bad, and it's, uh, of course, dangerous for the mm -hmm. players to continue. Sure. Lightning might uh, might stop it, but I don't know whether I'm going to have any lightning. Mm, right now, I don't hear any thunder or lightning. It's just a, it's a monsoon-type rain. At some point, we should try to get a, a shot of the flag and also the scoreboard so that people can really see how hard the wind is blowing. Maybe we can set that one up. First and 10 for the Falcons. Flag flies, it goes the <laughs> whistles blow, and that'll stop the play. Looks like one of the colonels was just a little bit aggressive that time. Offside, maybe? Yeah, it looked like he went to the neutral zone. Into that famous neutral zone, yep. Lined up over the football, so it'll be a five-yard penalty. That's probably been the most effective play of the game so far for the Pitch Falcon offense. They've had a rough time here. Falcons have had two first and fives. Last time they weren't able to take advantage of the Colonels being in the neutral zone. Now they have another first and five, and they're looking for their first first down. And there's the pick, there's the flag. There's the shot we wanted. You can see that wind whipping and the clock running with 8.09 to go. A handoff to Johns, and he's got short yardage. Two, maybe three. Ah, uh, let's give him two. David Rack made the stop with some help from uh, number 32 for the uh, Fudge Colonels, that's uh, Tom Tchaikovsky. So Not the famous uh, composer. So I just keep on remembering what Bill Mignall told me. It does not rain in Ledger. That's right. And you can see how much it's not raining right now. About four inches worth of not raining. In motion to the far side. The handoff goes to Johns again. Off tackle. Johns with some running room. Cuts it back. Breaks a couple of tackles. Picks up his first down. Scott Bonsall made the stop for the first down for the Falcons. Falcon first down. The Falcon fortunes are turning here a little bit. And the fans just outside of us are cheering their Falcons on. And uh, we'd like to remind you that you're tuning in to the best of the local Eastern Connecticut Conference high school football on Star Cable, Channel 36. I got to tell you, I got to tip the hat to the camera people today because I'll tell you, this is about as bad as it gets. We're inside nice and dry. They're outside taking all these nice pictures. 7.05 to go, first and 10. The Falcons in the Colonel territory for the first time of the ball game. Back to throw. Lowry loops it down the sideline, and they say he caught it in bounds. Is that Keating? I thought he was out of bounds. No, it isn't Keating. It's number 81 in the ball game for the Fitch Falcons, Jesse Hayes. But I thought he might have been out of bounds, Bobo. Looked. Uh, close, but again, if you saw the shot on our expert uh, camera, you know that uh, it was just within uh, within the confines of the football field. No they problem. Have, they have hazard duty pay for these camera people today. Definitely. Or? Second down and five. We'll call it six. A pickup of four on the pass. 
Motion to the far side, and again, crossing the line of scrimmage there is number 46 for the legend Colonel on defense, Scott Robbins. That's one of the tackles crossing and making contact. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> the Fitch Falcons are beginning to uh, have a steady diet of these offside calls. They're moving the football. They're getting a little bit of a drive going here. And we've had three people scoring for the Ledger Colonels, Mike Quagan, Mike Daggett, and Scott Bonsell. 18 to nothing. The Ledger Colonels leading this one in the middle of a monsoon. Second down and short, about a half yard to go. Here's the handoff to Johns, and he's got the first down. Chasing him down from the back side was number 54, Jason Gorman. Seems like he's been around for years, doesn't it? But he's only a junior. He's only a junior, and uh, thinking about that run back on the punt by Scott Bonzo, it's not very often you see that in high school football. No, but we did see a lot of it when uh, this guy named Jamal Johnson was playing for the uh, New London Whalers. So he was he was he was electric city back there running back some of those punts. 621 to go, 18 nothing you score from Legend High School. And here's Johns trying the near side of the field this time and not much running room there. Glatz on the tackle. And I tell you this is when the pits start to really turn into the pits. Yeah, and I'm thinking about going over to the London, uh, excuse me, the New England home video, Sam. Oh yeah? Pick up uh, one of those hot new releases. Got it. <laughs> okay. Flag 601, and the clock is stopped now as we have a flag, as you so adroitly pointed out, Bobo. Jack McDonald doing a game today, huh? Jack is officiating up at Plainfield High School. Is that a morning game? Morning game. And the wind uh, I and wonder, the rain yeah, I wonder, this way now. I wonder what, uh, what type of conditions they have up there. Probably much the same, I would Similar presume. Similar to what we're having here, I'm yeah. sure. When they get that dome built, we won't run into this problem. The Mignall Dome? The Mignall Dome. Yep. Penalty on the play. It looks like it's going to give the Falcons another first down. A 15-yarder. So I tell you what, the Falcons have really been aided by penalties in this particular drive. I think that's, what, the third or the fourth penalty in this drive alone. 5.52 to go before halftime. And they'll be back at halftime drying off, I presume. The handoff to Lydon and Joe Lydon trying to break free. And I believe that was Alan Glatz who had a hold of the jersey and just would not let go. <laughs> well, two things can happen with that ledger defense. You can either tighten up a little bit and become more aggressive because of the 18 to nothing lead, or in the hand may perhaps become a little complacent and not as sharp because the Falcons have moved the ball better on this drive than any of their previous opportunities this morning. Well, it seems like they did have lost a little bit of their concentration because as you, as you mentioned, uh, they're just uh, being penalized to death here on this drive. Second down and uh, roughly 12 yards to go. Motion to the far side. Here's the pitch to Johns. And Johns is just going to try to cut, but he slips and falls right at the line of scrimmage. Chasing him down was uh, Clint Robinson. And also number 52, Brent Yeomans. And Sam, at the current time, the weather and the field conditions are going to take that particular type of a runaway. You're not going to be able to sweep, uh, as we just saw John's attempt to do. It's just uh, the footing is not that good. Mm -hmm. Now you see the rain pelting down. All right. We're having some uh, technical difficulties on the field, so we're going to try and bring you this one <laughs> from the head up. But... Uh, the ball is handed off and short yardage on the play. There we go. Now we're back in the action. This so type of weather really puts a strain on uh, not only the players, but those of us trying to cover them. Fourth down, and there you see <laughs> the wet weather. It is nasty, folks. It's really pelting down. And you can see it's a little sloppy. There's the football. Imagine trying to hang on to that thing in this kind of weather. No, you hang on to the football, but uh, keep your footing and try to see with a... How about stay alive? Try to see who's got the ball. <laughs> okay. Three minutes and 30 seconds to go. We're going to take a break after this play. Back to throw is Lowry down the middle and almost picked off. Almost picked off by Pogany. And uh, with three minutes and 25 seconds to go here in the first half, let's take a quick timeout. 
And we'll be back. 3.21 to go. And the sky has caved in here, folks. And John Donilon from the Compass is talking about building an ark and getting the animals stacked two by two or two, by two and two. Two and two. What one male, for? one female. One male, one female. So there we can uh, continue on here. There's the, there's the look at it from ground level. A handoff to Daggett, and you can see him spun down by number 76. That's Mike Murphy. Came across from his defensive tackle position. Made a heck of a play. So the Colonels have dominated the first half of play. They've got that 18 to nothing lead, so that I would say that uh, for all practical purposes, Bill Mignaught and the Legend Colonels can pretty much dictate, along with the weather, the way the rest of this ball game will go. I'm sure they'll uh, stick it to the ground and keep it there because they don't want to give the Falcons any life. We'll, uh, we'll stick with this ground level camera because we're just having trouble with some of the other equipment because of all this rain and wind. Once that moisture gets in there, it's awful tough to, to deal with. Well, Scott Bonsall ran for that uh, punt return for the touchdown. I heard some noise upstairs so that, you know, it was windy, it was rainy, and uh, he was running, and there was all, all kinds of things shaking around us. So perhaps oh, yeah? uh, that's... Some Maybe somebody fell filming, down? Filming above us had some problems. Ah, but it's dry inside the booth. It certainly is. Although I tell you what, it, when it really started coming down there for a minute, it started to splash in from our little cubby hole over here. Time out on the field. Looks like they're having coffee this morning. Two minutes and 22 seconds to go in the first half of this one. Legend Colonels with a comfortable 18 to nothing lead. And you see the uh, Fitch coaching staff talking things over with their defense. And had the Colonels been able to execute on their extra points, we really would have had some deuces wild up on the board. Yeah, it would have been 22 to nothing with 2.22 to go in the second game of our season. Second down. Second down and second 20 to quarter. go in the second quarter. Wow. <laughs> you talk about a royal flush. My goodness. All right. All right. Second down. We're going to stay with our ground level look at this one while we uh, try and get some protection for our other higher level cameras. There you see the ball batted away by uh, the defensive safety. Jeff Delos Rays. Good defensive play by Jeff. And it's unbelievable as we both agree that the Colonels would uh, dictate what happened in the rest of the, the ball game with this big lead. They go to the air. Amazing, isn't it? He must, Bill Mignall must be listening and just trying to cross us up. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. So it'll bring up a third down now and about 20 yards to go. Not fit for man nor beast. Look at that. That's, that's the trenches, folks. Third down and 20. Back to throw. Oh, they fake the throw, and they run the sprint draw to Bonsal, and he fooled not only us, but he fooled uh, almost the, the entire Falcon defense and picked up, well, a good 15 yards, but still going to be about five, maybe six yards shy of the first down. So Bonsal again uh, looking good running the ball uh, along with Mike Daggett and Mike Quagan, and uh, we mentioned earlier that Mike Daggett might uh, reach that 100-yard mark today, but I don't think he's handled the ball too many times recently. A good call by the uh, Colonels, that sprint draw. <coughs> and we've got a timeout. So there's a break in the action. We've got one minute, 49 seconds to go here before halftime. Your score, Ledger, 18, and the Pitch Falcons, nothing. <laughs> Bill Donovan. Jack McDonald will join us next week. 128 to go. The kick was a good one by Dan Forson. Just knocked it out of bounds. Back at the Falcon 24-yard line. So with 128 to go, the Falcons, do you think uh, they may just kind of try to pack it in here before halftime? Well, uh, knowing Mike uh, Ellis, I think that they really try to score if they can. Mike Daggett is the leading ground gainer of the morning. Seven carries for 80 yards. All right, back to throw. Lowry, they're not going to be conservative, and he's hit and sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And that's number 84, Dan Rack. David Rack, excuse me, on the sack. Rack on the sack. And Mike Quagan for the Ledger Colonels scored their first touchdown on a two-yard run, and uh, he's carried the ball six times for 24 yards. Good one, Sam. That was nice. That was good. You like that. Rack on the sack. A little entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> You need everything you can, and on a day like this one, it's so gloomy, and it's 18 to nothing. 
I need a little something. I might even have to sing as the second half. Uh, uh, no, you don't have to sing. All right. I don't think we're that desperate yet. I'll let you know. So we'll have some crack stats from Matt Pirtle uh, as we begin the second half of play today. 114 to go before halftime. 18 and nothing. Colonel's late again. Maybe it'll just be Matt stats. <coughs> yeah, maybe. Legit Colonels have completely dominated play in the first half. Fitch Falcons, I believe, with what? Two first downs, Sam? Something like that. But, you know, th this Ledger team loves to play in this stuff. You know what I mean? Let's make Let it three. Just checking to see if Matt was paying attention. Three first downs for the Falcons. Three. This is the kind of weather the, the uh, Ledger Colonels like. You know, they rock them, sock them, keep it on the ground. Very conservative. They've got the kind of power game that uh, is a better suited to this type of weather. And this, Obviously. Uh, this type of a day also reminds me, again, of being in Ledger and it never rains in Ledger, of a homecoming game that we did on a local radio station about four years ago when Mrs. Bill Mignot was up here keeping her recently done hair dry because it was pouring uh. like this, even though it doesn't rain. <laughs> never rains in Southern California or Ledger, Connecticut. Third, uh, second down and long. Handoff right up the middle and not much doing there as you can see, and the clock will roll with 106 to go. You think uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a few dirty jerseys to clean come Sunday morning? I'm gonna try out that new detergent. Yep. Second half is gonna really be sloppy, and uh, you were looking, calling earlier for having some of the subs come in for Ledger, but uh, that's really asking for it, uh, trying to <laughs> identify the players uh, with muddy jerseys. <laughs> it sure is. Well, we, we never, s we, 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 you can never expect the expected in high school football. That's for darn sure. 31 seconds to go before halftime. I'm sure the Falcons are, s well, well, I was going to say, I'm sure they'll just settle down and try to run out the clock, but no way, Jose, as they throw the football. Incomplete. Intended for Johns. It'll bring up a fourth down. I mean, it's difficult to, uh, Pan in on the officials today. I recognize just one from this distance. Uh, Bill Murphy is in the backfield, and he's a former principal out at Waterford High School. Good old Bill. 23 seconds to go before halftime. 18 to nothing. The Colonels leading the Fitch Falcons. This kind of a day is good for those uh, those home videos, don't you think, Bill? certainly is nothing better to do but as you mentioned get some popcorn and a home video from New England bi home video and sit back and watch Relax. the movie. Here's the punt fielded by Hogany and he uh, dropped the knee down at the 47 yard line and that's where the thought the uh, budget colonels will have it first and ten. And you notice that sign that they kept the ball away from number 21 alleged cur colonels, Scott Bonsell. They did indeed, and it worked. Haven't seen too many other high school coaches here scouting today, and uh, I'm sure that they'll be watching this game on Star Cable Channel 36. You mean they'll be scouting via the airwaves? Is that legal? Here's the pass downfield, going for the gut, and incomplete intended for Daggett. Really going for the throat there on the final play before halftime. Bill Mignall saying, ah, what the heck, let's, uh, let's air it out. And boy, <laughs> i tell you what, it almost worked. Packet was open. And I'm seeing a different type coached game here today by really? Bill Mignall, Legend mm -hmm. Colonels. They've opened it up uh, the offense a little bit, and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, they did open it up and uh, really going for the jugular there on that final play before halftime. Daggett, not Packet. And uh, he was open by a good couple of yards, so... Uh, that's going to do it. That's the end of the first half of play from uh, Monsoon Central. After one half, your score, the Legend Colonels 18 and the Fitch Falcons nothing. Donovan. Bill, it's nice to be back with you doing another game here. We're at halftime here at Legend High School where the Colonels are leading the Falcons 18 to nothing, and it's been raining like crazy out there. The field conditions are just going to just get worse. Rain, heavy winds, 
dominated by alleged colonels. We're going to have some stats for you from Matt Perlow and always Bolton. We're going to talk about uh, women in the men's locker room. And we'll talk to John Donilon, too, who's been following the Fitch Falcons this year and uh, have a few things for you here at halftime. Uh, once again, 18 to nothing, alleged colonels leading the Fitch Falcons. Why don't we bring in uh, our statistician here who's uh, doing a special job filling in for us. Hobo? All right, uh, Matt, why don't you come on in? Matt's with the uh, Norwich Bulletin, and today uh, Matt is filling in for Jack McDonald, who is uh, one of our broadcast mates here on Stora Cable 36, and he is officiating a ball game today. So, Matt, why don't we run through the stats, and uh, they look kind of lopsided today with the alleged colonels, uh, not only with the lead, 18 to nothing, but also dominating with the stats. Oh, there's no doubt. I think the key is uh, the, uh, the difference in running, if you look. Ludgers rushed 15 times for 121 yards, where Fitch has 18 carries and a net loss of nine yards. That includes four sacks, too. And the big difference, too, is the only thing that's actually keeping uh, Fitch from uh, staying out of this game is Ledger has 65 yards in penalties, which Bill McDonald, I'm sure, is very upset with. So Mike Wagan on a two-yard run, Mike Daggett with a, a long run, and then Scott Bonsall showing a little bit uh, with the special team scoring on a 69-yard punt return so that legend colonels have dominated. And we, again, want to thank you for doing the stats for us today. We'll have stats as the game continues. But uh, the talk of the country is the fact that uh, there has been controversy at the New England Patriot game, and then some of the other NFL teams are following suit by not allowing women into the locker room. So your thoughts on... What could be done to eliminate that, uh, that problem? Well, first of all, most of the women at this, uh, that level are very professional about their job. Uh, they're not going in there for a peek at the players. They're just trying to do their job. Some solutions have been proposed give the players more time for showers, but uh, anytime you get an evening game, you're talking uh, serious deadlines. Uh, you run into an extra inning baseball game, and these people are facing deadlines. So I think what they have to do is uh, I think the men just have to accept it like men and realize that the women do it professionally and let things be the way they were before. And what I noticed uh, back in 86 and 88 at Fenway Park, whenever there was a playoff, American League Championship playoff or World Series, they normally had a press area set up away from the locker room where they'd have the players that the fans would want to hear from there uh, so that the media could meet with them. And most of the time that was set up just because of the onslaught of the media. And I think if you run into that, if you do that all the time, you're going to have problems with the deadlines. And uh, as you probably remember back in 86 and 88, that it took a lot longer to get those interviews done than it would during a normal regular season game. And as you can see from our field camera, it is still raining very hard here at Ledger High School where the Colonels have an 18-0 lead over the Fitch Falcons. And we're going to put you in a position of being a coach right now. What does Mike Ellis and the uh, Fitch Falcons have to do in the second half to get back in the ballgame? Well, they're going to have to try something. They're going to need a big play, special teams play or something. They've tried to run up the middle. They can't. Ledger's dominated. They've tried to run outside. They can't because of the weather. Uh, it's horrible condition for passing. They've already been sacked four times. So what he needs to do is get a big special teams play uh, just to get that first touchdown and then try to establish something offensively. And they really have to settle down uh, stopping Ledger. The Colonels have run up the middle all day, and they've rushed for over 100 yards in one half. Matt Pearl from the Noah's Bulletin, thanks for being with us at halftime. Thanks, sir. It's 18-0 at halftime. The Ledger Colonel is ahead of the Fitch Falcons. We'll be back with John Donnellan of the Compass right after we take this break. Stay with us. All right, Bill Donovan back at Ledger High School. It's halftime, and it's raining. The Colonels lead the Fitch Falcons 18 to nothing. And uh, joining me, the sports editor of the Compass, John Donnellan. And, John, uh, just quickly, what are the Falcons going to have to do in the second half? Again, as Matt said, they haven't had much success doing really much of anything. The, the best weapon has been uh, some uh, ledger mistakes, penalties, uh, things of that nature. They, they're going to have to get a big play. They get the opening kick here in the second half, I believe, so this might be a, a good chance for them to, to try and do something, get a big play, maybe start a drive and get back in the game. And quickly, your solution to the problem of having either women in uh, men's locker rooms or vice versa? Well, it's, it's a difficult situation to begin with, as Matt was saying, with deadlines, you can possibly maybe extend the, the uh, cool down period to let the players get a chance to get dressed and stuff. But if deadline becomes that much of a problem, it would seem a, a neutral area, a, a semi-private press area, 
would be the, uh, another solution. All right, John Donlin from the Compass, thanks for being with us at halftime. Thank you. We'll be back with the third quarter action from Ledger High School right after this. Stay with us. Back at uh, Legend High School, Sam Gingerola, Bill Donovan, we're just about set to go with the second half of action, and there you see the field conditions here. Well, uh, anything but, uh, but ideal, Bobo. Uh, it's been raining like heck since, oh, uh, what, the uh, middle part of the second quarter? Well, as you know, we had rain early this morning, 7, 7.30, came down in buckets. The field held the rain pretty well. It stopped and cleared off a little bit, but uh, as you mentioned, as the game began, that's when the the rain started to come down just about the time Scott Bonsell scored his touchdown. And that uh, was with 8.41 left in the second quarter. So that's about the time it started pouring. And there you see the Fitch Falcons uh, returning to their sideline, getting ready to do battle here in the second half. Really an uphill climb for the Fitch Falcons. They've got to hope for some breaks and some big breaks to get back into this one, trailing 18 to nothing, especially under these kind of weather conditions, Well. Fitch Falcons have had difficulty, as Matt mentioned at halftime with the statistics, uh, moving the ball. Uh, Legit Colonels, a little aggressive, uh, had a number of penalties against them, and that's how the Colonels ended up uh, with a little bit of uh, movement that they had in the first half. So Colonels can dictate the entire second half unless the Fitch Falcons decide to either go to the air, and it's not advisable because of the weather and the field conditions, but uh, they're going to have to move the ball some way either than trying to run around the ends or up the middle. Captains are meeting at the center of the field. Uh, the Fitch Falcons will be receiving the football. Just a question of which uh, goal they'll be defending. You can see the uh, Colonels looking on. And there are the captains meeting at the center of the field. The Fitch Falcons, as you see, will be receiving. And it looks like they all are wearing the same uniforms they had in the first half, so they did not have a quick change or a quick dry. No speedy dry. No speedy dry, huh? They not just today. get it out of the bucket and throw it on them. Is that how it works? So it should be the uh, <laughs> Falcons receiving the start to second half. Uh, Mike Quagan, as we mentioned, scored the first Colonel touchdown on a two-yard run. Mike Daggert, who had 80 yards in the first half, uh, scored the second Colonel touchdown. And that's Scott Bonsell, who has been on the special teams receiving and running him back, ran a 69-yard return back for the third score of the morning, putting the Colonels, uh, yes, putting the Colonels up 18 to nothing and have not as yet uh, converted an extra point attempt. No, they haven't. I'm glad you're not the, the coach of either one of these teams throwing speedy dry on them at halftime. Just at the middle of the field. Oh, you're talking about the field or the, the players? The field. Oh, no, you put speedy oh, dry on, on the field. Well, I, th I thought you were talking about the players. No, they would be able to say. see if it put speedy dry on Well, that's, what I, that's my point. <laughs> All right, we've got another half of football to go from Legend High School. As you can, that, that is not uh, lightning or thunder. I think just somebody falling down on the roof above us. I'm sure the footing is not too good <laughs> on the press box just above us. All right, so it'll be the uh, Colonels kicking off to the Falcons, and they'll have to hold the football as this breeze, as we mentioned. The fringe of Lily has uh, certainly impinged on this football game. And tonight, it's also Wednesday night for us. It is. October 18th. Oh, okay. Here we go. 24 more minutes of football here. Here's the kick by Quagan. Again, it's a short end-over-end -end job. Picked up. Well, he's trying to pick it up. Inside the 20-yard line. Right up the middle and some running room. This could be the break the Falcons are looking for. Dallas Rays right to midfield. And he almost broke it, Phil. Almost broke it. Scott Bonsell, number 21, at midfield to uh, get in on the uh, stop on the play so that the Fitch Falcons and the, the fans that are remaining here have something to cheer about to start the third quarter. Well, he almost broke it to Dallas Rays. And, you know, whenever the, it seems like whenever somebody bobbles or muffs a kick return, it throws that defense off a little bit. And that uh, seemed to be the case here. The Ledger de uh, defenders uh, really were not up to snuff as far as timing on that play. So the Falcons, uh, we'll see what kind of adjustments. So we heard from uh, both Matt and John at halftime. We'll see what kind of adjustments Mike Gellis and the Fitch Falcon coaching staff have come up with here to begin the third quarter. All right, we apologize for the picture quality. We're shooting through the booth window, as it were. The handoff goes to Johns, breaks a couple of tackles. George Johns picks up pretty good running room down to about the 45-yard line and a little bit of extracurricular there. They finally shake hands. 
Johns, and number 32, uh, Tom Tchaikovsky. Johns has shown some good quickness in that time off tackle and a little bit of a gain so that uh, Falcons appear to be going to stay on the ground and try to run either off guard or off tackle. All right, second down at about five from the ledger Colonel 46-yard line with 11-10 to go here in the third quarter. Colonels lead it 18 to nothing. Falcons trying to get back in here. They need a score early in this third quarter to do it. The handoff goes to, I believe it's Lydon. Joe Lydon picks up a couple, but not a heck of a lot of running room there. And we have an injured Colonel, I believe. That's Jason Gorman, number 54. Yes, it is. He gets up to his feet, though. I guess he's okay. Shaking them cobwebs loose about now. Get the number of that truck. And after I mentioned that the Falcons were running off tackle, that's normally a cue for the team to go to the air. But uh, Falcons uh, effectively running the ball on the ground third and four, so they've had good movement here to start the third quarter. Think they'll go for it on fourth if they don't get it? Well, here they've got a choice, but I'm sure they've got to try to keep the ball on the ground and, and go for the first down. All right, full house backfield, power eye to the near side of the field. Lowry barking signals, hands it off to the big fullback, and he's not going to get any yardage. Was that Johns or was that number 38? It was Johns. And uh, no yardage gained whatsoever. That'll bring up a fourth down. And we, again, have some, a little uh, unsportsmanlike conduct call against the Fitch Falcons. I think it's going to go against Mike Murphy, the uh, offensive right guard, because he got tangled up with one of the uh, colonels. Got tangled up. Johns that time got the ball a little bit uh, late so that uh, the play was slowing developing. 10.24 to go here in the third quarter. And the uh, penalty marched off in the opposite direction. Now, they announced that it was an unsportsmanlike against the Falcons, but they're going the opposite direction. So, obviously, it was against the Colonels. Had to be against the Colonels, so first down for the Fitch Falcons, and Colonels lead it 18-0. They march off the yardage. The referee's uh, talking things over now. We're in the process of resetting some of our camera equipment. Falcons looking for their third win of the season. They have lost to West Haven and Hamden, but have defeated East Lyme and Waterford. Ledger, spotless, their 3-0 have wins over St. Bernard, Stonington, and Killingly. Here's the handoff to Johns. Not much running room there. So it'll be second down, and it's still about 10 yards to go. Right at the, uh, I believe that's the... 30-yard line. Everything's kind of obliterated here now. John's the to tell. John's has uh, been the key runner for the Falcons here in the third quarter, and the Colonels are now keying on him, so that's that's slowing down his effectiveness. And you can get a real feel for how this one is playing out here from that ground-level camera. Ball ball. In the it trenches. Is, it is wet, sticky, mucky, gucky. What other kind of terminology can we come up with? Just downright. Uh, Back to throw, looking downfield, and sacked is Lowry. So a loss on the play of about two, 10 yards or so, and that'll make it third down at about 20. So that'll take care of just about any offensive uh, yardage gained by the Falcons uh, thus far this morning with that uh, substantial loss on the play. And an official timeout with 9.14 to go here in the third quarter. The score, the legend Colonels, 18 and the Fitch Falcons nothing. High school 18 to nothing. Here's the punt from the Fitch Falcons on fourth and 20. It's a good one. Deep downfield, and is it going to make the end zone? No, it doesn't. So Bonsall has to pick it up at the one, and he's knocked down inside the five yard line. A great kick by Murphy. Just hit that wet turf and kind of stuck there, Paul. Little hesitation that time on the part of Bonsall. In the past, he's been aggressive, taking the ball, looking for the run back, let the ball stop, see it wasn't going to go into the end zone, and then was probably a little bit too late, then decided to try to run with the ball, but uh, tackled. Uh, so it's going to be the worst possession, worst field position of the, uh, the morning for the uh, alleged Colonels. With 7.59 to go, the answer to that problem is to catch the football in the air. You can't let it hit in this kind of weather because... That'll create all kinds of problems. 7.52 to go here in the third quarter. Colonels still with a comfortable 18 to nothing lead, but they've got their backs to the wall here at their own four-yard line. Hand off to Daggett and not much running room there. As you see, that front wall of the uh, Fitch Falcons just would not be moved. A lot of white shirts still on their feet there, Bobo. 
And Sam and Jack and I will be back here at Ledger High School next Saturday as the East Line Vikings come over to take on the Ledger Colonels. Inle unless the field gets washed away. No, the field will be here, okay. guaranteed. All right. Hopefully, hopefully the, uh, the weather conditions will be a little bit more favorable for football. Because you, as we both know, it never rains in Ledger, Connecticut. That's true. Wide outs to, to the wide side. The handoff goes to, I believe that's Daggett. I'm not sure, but short you have running room nonetheless. Not much there at all as the Falcons diagnosed the player. It was Quagan, the big fullback. Picked up a couple, but nowhere near first down territory. So now it's a third down and long yardage facing uh, the Ledger Colonels. And do you throw under these kind of conditions? Uh, right in your own backyard, or do you, like, uh, run the football? I think the main thing to do is to use up the clock. So let's run with the ball, perhaps uh, maybe a little play action, but to pass it and give the Falcons a chance for an interception this deep in the territory I don't think would be a good idea. Okay, both wideouts to the far side of the field. Again, they are going to throw the football under pressure. Gets away from it. Now fires deep downfield. Got a man open. Incomplete. It was intended for the split end, John Shepard, an incomplete Bobby Willard on the defensive coverage. We didn't quite catch it on that one field camera, but uh, great play by Bobby Willard defensively. Great uh, play by Willard defensively, and again, when you pass, uh, most of what can happen is bad, and that time uh, had a one-on-one -on -one situation, but the ball was not caught so that the uh, Colonels would be forced to punt. And they almost had uh, Forson in the end zone for a safety. Not quite. Forson got away, got the ball away. And I'll tell you what, Shepard was open. Wide open ledger kernel offense. Just did not connect. Here's the kick from Forson. On the hop, he gets it, kicks it away. A low, wobbly, end-over-end -end kick. Hits at the 20, bounds across the 20. It's about the 35, almost near the 40-yard line. So a great kick from his own end zone. Almost stepped on the end line, but Forson gets it away. And under the conditions, that was a great kick. Uh, took the words out of my mouth, especially with it uh, being as windy and rainy and as wet as it is, uh, to be that effective, uh, you know, give credit uh, where credit's due. And again, a comment on that uh, legend offense. Uh, Bill Mignault uh, really has it open this year, and uh, we'd like to remind you that Mike Daggett uh, unofficially has uh, 80 yards this morning, so that uh, he needs another 20 to reach that 100-yard uh, plateau. All right, first and 10 for the, uh, for the Fitch Falcons. And now we understand we have our field camera back online up top. The way the weather is co cooperating a little bit more. There's a handoff to Johns, just trying to find some running room up on that uh, offensive line, but not much there. Here you see uh, Jason Gorman and Tchaikovsky in on the tackle and a flag on the play. What no do you think, Bo? Normally, uh, at that particular part of the field, it might be a holding penalty, so we'll see... Uh what the officials do with it. They're talking to Ledger right now. And they're looks looking like they're toward take the it against the side of the football. No, now we're coming the back way. the other way. They're going <laughs> to go the other way. That's a nice little dance. What was that, an Irish jig? I know I'm confused on occasion, but uh, <laughs> they were talking to Ledger, so it meant that uh, the, the penalty should have been against the Fish Falcons. And it was indeed. Even though he started in the wrong direction, he did get things straightened out. Actually, Back on the field now where the only real uh, indication of the true wetness is uh, right about midfield so that Fitch there Falcons with the ball. There you can see the uh, spots of uh, puddles forming on the field. That's about the worst spot on this entire football field, though. Really kept it in good condition. Second down, uh, excuse me, first down about 25. The handoff to Johns, short yardage. Colonel's right there to meet him. That's Glatz getting up off the stack. And number 49 from his uh, from his uh, linebacker position, Ken Park. Well, the Falcons have minus yardage gained for this morning or lost for this morning. There's less than five minutes now left in the third quarter. They're down 18 to nothing, so the Falcons have got to go to the air. Four minutes and 53 seconds, Bo. 18 to nothing. Colonels lead it, and I'm sure they'll be just as pleased as punch to go off without any more scores. Just put that W in the books. Thank you very much, and let's go home and dry off. Out to the near side, the pass is incomplete, out of bounds, so that'll bring up third down, and still about 25 yards to go for the Fitch Falcons. I'd like to remind you to take home a movie from New England Home Video, 990 Pequannock Road, Groton, 
where the family can choose from over 10,000 movies, including all of the new hottest releases. 10,000, that's quite a few. It's the hottest ones that I like the best. Uh-huh. I kind of had a feeling. 4.38 to go, 18 to nothing, Colonel's leading it. I'd like to thank New England Home Video for uh, sponsoring our broadcast here, the second one. We've got more coming up. Next week we'll be back here. East Lime takes on Ledger. Right, that's an afternoon game. One thirty start. And hopefully the weather will be a little bit better. On the reverse, to quarterback Lowry has knocked off his pins for a loss. And i got to believe it was a little mix-up on that play. Looked like one of the offensive backs zigged when he should have zagged, Bobo, because it uh, looked like Lowry was looking for somebody to hand it off to, and there was nobody there. Nobody there except the Ledger Colonel defense, and they've done an outstanding job here this morning. Falcons with minus yardage for the morning. Actually, minus 17. Fourth down and a country mile. And Murphy will kick it away from his own 30-yard line. Snap is good, gets it away. It's a low kick, hits on the 45-yard line, picked up by uh, Balson, Bonsell, rather. And he gets a, a short return out near the 36-yard uh, line. Goes Bonsell. And it'll be first and 10 for the Colonels with 3.50 to go in the third quarter. I see you digging around there, Bo. What do you got? Well, Bonsell that time uh, looked like he was going to recover and run the ball, but he uh, bumped into one of his own players. I can't believe it. It says Clint Robinson. It's almost Ooh. like Cliff Robinson. Yeah, that's our, our director here today. So Cliff, Down on the booth. Cliff Robinson, number Any 53. Relation? It's got to be. That's why we're here. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. The handoff on first down goes to Quagan. And uh, a whole stack of bodies up front to meet him. That's almost like my brother Daryl and my brother Daryl. Yeah. Cousin Cliff and my cousin Cliff. Mm -hmm. Kevin Pierce on the stop. He had some help from Lydon and Adam Scully Power. The front wall of the Falcons. Well, the exception of those long plays, though, I tell you, the Fitch Falcons have not given up a heck of a lot of easy yardage today. No, the Colonels have scored on the big plays, two big running plays, one by uh, Mike Daggett, the other by Scott Bonsell. Yep. Back to throw now on second down, looping it down the middle, almost there it is, picked it off. That's Eric Baldos picking it off for the Fitch Falcons, and they, they're in business. Finally ripped down by Daggett, but not before he gets inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. So the Falcons, the first turnover of the ball game, and that's really surprising considering the weather conditions. Haven't had a fumble yet. Basically what I'm thinking that uh, Bill Mignault and his coaching staff are thinking is let's go with our passing game under game conditions against an opponent. And uh, they've, they've got a comfortable lead, 18 to nothing, so that they can experiment. If the Falcons happen to bring it back and score, then they can go to a more conservative type offense. So they just, you, what you're saying is they're just experimenting with a passing game here, right? That's correct. Very good. So, 2.42 to go. 18 to nothing. Beginning to lose my concentration here, Bobo. First and 10 for the Falcons. 44-yard line after the interception on the sprint out. Here comes Lowry. He's in big trouble, folks, and he's going to be sacked at the 50-yard line. Loses the football, and I believe... The Falcons have it back. I'm not quite sure, certain of that just yet, but yes, they do have it back. Back at the midfield stripe. Who is it picking up the ball? I believe it's Adam Scully Power, number 66. Am I correct? Can hardly see his number. It's either Power or Greg Blair, the, uh, the center, who picked it up. And it was a flag on the play. Mm-hmm. We'll but not much went right with that play, did it? No, what happens on a pass play, if it doesn't develop early, it's not going to develop at all. He had no one that he could throw the ball to, so he just more or less had to pull it in and run with it uh, and eat the loss. And eat it he did. A loss of about, uh, well, eight yards on the play after you tack on the extra yard for the fumble. And you see the officials, the pinstripers, talking things over. This Glatz trying to eavesdrop a little bit on the conversation. Now, uh... Referees talking to the Colonels as Scott Bonsell. Scott's had a good game today. He certainly has. run back, a couple of tackles. And there are the, the bravest fans in the world, folks. Let's take a look at our <laughs> upcoming schedule again. Next Saturday, we'll be here on October 20th. East Lime will take on Ledger. Game time is 1.30. On the 27th, Montville is at Stonington. 
on November 3rd. Legend will be at New London. That's going to be the key game of the ECC this year. Then on November 10th, we'll be at Stonington as the Whalers will go back and play Stonington. Stonington always plays the Whalers tough. And then on Thanksgiving Day, oh boy. we're going to return back to oh boy. Sam Gingerella's alma mater, Westley House School, uh, High School. House School? House School, as the Stonington <laughs> Bears take on Westley in that Thanksgiving Day Classic. Go get them, dog. Two minutes to go before the end of the third quarter here. Second down and 20. They decline the penalty. And on that sprint draw, Johns with some ru good running room gets it back into uh, Colonel territory back near the original line of scrimmage. So a pickup of about 10, actually more than 10. It'll be third down and about nine. So on the sprint draw, they surprise the Colonel defense. And maybe on that November 22nd date, uh, we can have them make it star at Cable 36 and also uh, Sam Gingerella Day over at uh, Westerly High. Oh my God. As Let's not stir up any unwarranted trouble here, Bob. One of the more well-known back to the old alma mater graduates return mm -hmm. known for what though that's the question back to throw and lowry is just eaten alive number 44 came across from his uh, defensive end position 44 is mike quagan alan glatz was there too and i tell you what not much time to throw that football for kevin lowry Every, any, everyone in the house knew he was going to throw it, and that's the, uh, usually the consequence. Passing game is ineffective when the defense knows you have to pass. If they know you have to pass, you should go into the shotgun or try to open up the game early by passing and mixing it with your running game. So right now, Falcons have their backs to the wall. And it's punting time for the Falcons. A low snap. Murphy trouble getting it, picking it up. And here's the shortest kick in history. About a, about a four or five-yard kick as it goes out of bounds at about the 40-yard line, but do we have a flag? No, indeed. We had some, uh, looked like one of the alleged colonels, Mike Quagan, was a little bit perturbed about something or other. Can't, um, can't really figure out what, but he was uh, a little bit angry. Was that Quagan or number 40? Number 40 would be, no, I believe that was Mike Quagan, number 44. He went after the punt, did not block it, and came off the field uh, a little bit annoyed. Don't quite know why, though, Bob. 31 seconds left in the quarter. <laughs> and this one's turning into a little bit of a laugher here at this point. Bobo. I'm getting ready to go over the New England video. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do there? Get some of those hot videos. Oh, I see. Any one of the 10,000. Is that really right, 10,000? I didn't lot. know they could fit them in one building. I want to know who counted them. Wasn't me. 31 <laughs> seconds to go before the end of the third quarter. Ledger leading at 18 to nothing. I may stop by on my way home. Pick one up for these long, lonely afternoons with the rain pelting down. Nice to have a video. The handoff to uh, Mike Daggett. Mike did a nice job getting away from a tackle. That was Mike Murphy who almost got him in the backfield. And uh, tell you what, Daggett put a heck of a move on there to get away from Murphy and pick up some yardage. And Daggett with a gain of about four on the play now has unofficially around 84 yards in the morning. Needs about 16 more for 100 yards. And wouldn't you know it, New England weather, it has now stopped raining. And the clock winding down here toward the end of the third quarter. Don't believe they'll get the play in here as we've got one second on the clock, and that's it. That'll do it. That's the end of the third quarter. From if you're dining out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, try G. Willikers, Southeastern Connecticut's most popular eatery, featuring an extensive 16-page menu with daily specials, casual dining, and reasonable prices. It'll make you say G. Willikers, Route 184. 18 to nothing. Fourth quarter just starting. Here's the screen pass to Daggett. Daggett in the open field. And Daggett is in Fitch Falcon territory near the 20 yard line. Near the 30, excuse me. And the Falcon defenders that were on that play are arguing that the ball went into the puddle before it was caught by Daggett. And uh, <laughs> they're uh, visibly upset with the, with the call and with the play. I tell you what, giving the term submarining a new meaning. That ball went underwater before he caught it, huh? That was a splash play. Is that what they call that? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll buy it. They got their way, though, Sam. I'll, I'll tell you what, they're going to take it back. They rule an incomplete forward pass. Nice. What do we got, third quarter stats here, Bobo? We've got some third quarter stats. Uh, Mike Quagan, eight carries for 27 yards. Daggert, Mike Daggert, nine for 85 yards, so he needs 15 more yards. And passing, 13 for 35 Seven sacks, four first downs, two by penalty for the 
Fitch Falcons and John's uh, 13 of 35 for the Fitch Falcons. So he's been their leading runner and was effective on a couple of plays and then the uh, Colonel defense started keying on him. So the incomplete pass makes a third down and about five yards to go as you see the Falcon defense deploying. Borson pitches it out to Daggett this time and Daggett's got a first down and more. Again, into Falcon territory, 45 yard line, picks up the first down as Mike Daggett allows the uh, Colonels to keep control of the football. And that's what they want to do, I'm sure, in this uh, fourth period is just run that clock out, Bobo. And another stat from Matt Pirtle, a minus 16 yards on the morning for the Fitch Falcon offense. Wow. Long day. Can't get much done on the scoreboard with minus, uh, what is it, 18 or 15? Uh, minus 16 yards. Yeah, when you're in that minus category, kind of tough to put some numbers on the board. So the Colonels have a point just about for every minus yard that the Falcons have. Well, that's an interesting stat. <laughs> okay. The handoff goes to Daggett once again. He picks his way upfield for about five yards, don't you think, Bo? Just about five, and Legend Colonels, again, uh, with the what appears to be a win this morning, going to build up. Uh, the interest in that game on November 3rd against the New London Whalers. Whalers uh, play this afternoon against Waterford, but uh, they have uh, they amassed, I think, one. about 34 or 35 regular season wins over the last couple of years. So look for the Colonels to give the Whalers all they can handle. On second down, the handoff goes to big uh, Mike Quagan. And Quagan stood up right at the 30-yard line. And Kevin we are Pierce made the stop. And we are told that some of the New London Whaler coaching staff was here during the first half of today's ball game, so that uh, they saw quite a bit. And I'm sure they went back just a little bit concerned about how they're going to deal with uh, Bill Mignault's colonels. And uh, boys in the pinstripes want to measure this for the first down. So while they do, we'll uh, try to coerce you into taking home a movie from New England Home Video. They're at 990 Pequannock Road in Groton where the family can choose from over 10,000, that's 10,000 movies, including, of course, Bobo, all the newest, hottest releases. Sounds good, good to me. Home video. Sounds good to me. We'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's ball game. And hopefully they'll be with us uh, through the course of the season. Our remaining ball games. Come on back. Our uh, debut season here on cable TV channel 36. We hope you're enjoying high school football here. We've had a couple of minor glitches, but uh, for the most part, things have been uh, going pretty much smoothly. Today, you, you can hardly blame it. You, you gotta give a tip of the hat to the cameramen today because they're doing extra hazardous duty out there today. They're all smiling right now, Sam. On the cross box, this is Bonsell, and Bonsell picks up another first down as he gets down near the 20-yard line on that old counter tray made famous by the Washington Redskins and run to perfection that time by the Ledger Colonels. So Cliff Robinson and uh, his staff, you'll see the credits at the end of today's broadcast, but cameramen have done a great job oh, and, yeah. uh, with little effort this morning. A little, little extra effort. Little, effort. Little, little, little extra effort, a mm -hmm. uh, little perspiration. They, uh, they got mm -hmm. us uh, on the air just as the national anthem was ending. So that uh, you've right, got... Under, under very adverse conditions, we might add. Here's the handoff to Daggett. Daggett with short yardage. If they uh, should poke one in here, Bobo, it's... Uh, kind of anticlimactic with 9.52 and to go and an 18 point lead as you see the uh, Colonel fans looking on of course we mentioned the bravest fans in high school football because they sat through this first half or stood through that first half in what was nothing short of a monsoon and I meant little effort because they do it so well so that uh, they didn't have to put much extra effort I got gotcha. you wide outs to the near side on the third down and the handoff goes to Daggett, and he is just swallowed up. Lydon was there first, Joe Lydon from his defensive end position. Kevin Pierce also there for the Fitch Falcons. So now it appears that the Colonels are going to try to keep the ball on the ground, which probably means that we'll end up seeing a pass play. But <laughs> with, with third and 12, uh, they should go to the air. But right now what they want to do with an 18 point lead is to run the clock out and get this ball game over with there well, you see the ball right just resting on that 30 yard line in the trenches the war has continued a little movement on that defensive line back to throw 
And completing the screen pass to their side, that's Daggett. Daggett picking his way downfield, a great little runner. And he gets inside the 15, down near the 10 yard line, and then I believe that'll be enough for a first down. Actually appeared to be enough blue shirts out there to provide the blocking after that nice screen play, but uh, Fitch Falcon defense came up and held the Colonels uh, to about uh, one yard short of the first down. All righty, 8.22 to go in this football game. It's been a soggy one, folks, but nonetheless, we haven't had a lot of fumbling of the football, not too many turnovers. As a matter of fact, only one turnover in this ball game. That was an interception in the third quarter by uh, the Fitch Falcons. It was Bobby Willard who picked it off. As you see the referees discussing things down there with uh, 8.22 to go. It's been a windy, mild, wet at, uh, morning here in Ledger, and the Colonels have had things just about all their own way. Colonels got on the board uh, early in the first quarter as Mike Quagan went in on a two-yard run on the first possession. Mike Daggett came back, uh, scored the second touchdown with uh, 11 minutes on the clock, and then in the second quarter, Scott Bonsell returned a punt for 69 yards in the 18 to nothing lead, and 8.41 on the clock uh, when that score was uh, recorded, so it was all Legend Colonels in the first half, second half, uh, kind of even. Is that Bill McNault in the in the uh, Colonel Holloway? Yeah, there's the old field general. Now heading to the sidelines, talking to his offense. And when is that McNault dome going to be done? In time for next week? Well, Bill is a legend over here. He's the <laughs> only athletic director they've had and the only football coach that they've had. Coming from, do you know where he coached before he came here? Uh, North Creek Academy? No. No. Uh... I don't know. I'm out of guesses. <laughs> Waterford High School. All right. That was my next guess. Believe it or not, that was my next guess. Yeah, so look at a few of the stalwarts that are still. That's on the Fitch Falcon sideline. And we've got to give them uh, a, a certain amount of bravery. And a little mix-up on the plays. You saw the ball snapped, I think, even before uh, Don Forson was ready for it. Dan Forson, excuse me. Didn't mean to call you Don, Dan. Or Dan Don. Don D. Dan. Dan Don. Dan Don. It's an easy mistake. It can happen. And Penalty will be against the Legend Colonels. That'll cost them five. They may go to the air now. <laughs> I sure hope not. Actually, the passing game has been pretty effective for the Legend Colonels and wide open offense uh, for the better part of the morning. I'll tell you what, they've had a few receivers open, and in this kind of field condition, sometimes uh, that's the way it works because the offensive receiver knows where he's going. So he can kind of step lightly, but the defender has to like follow him around, and sometimes you can slip and fall. Back to throw, you call it, Bobo. Right down the middle of the field, just looping it up, and it's caught! It's caught by Clanton for the touchdown! That ball was bobbled around in the end zone, finally picked up by Clanton for the touch, uh, Clinton rather, for the touchdown. James yep. Clanton, number 88, picks it out of midair, and boy, that kind of caps it for the Falcons. I mean, they've had some hard luck today. Everything going uh, the Colonel's way. And ain't it the truth when you're you know, like undefeated, things just seem to bounce for you. The question I have on that play is whether or not Scott Bonsall, number 21, touched it. Then it went to the other legend Yeah, because receiver. in high school ball, you can't do that. You can't to deflect it from one offensive man to the other. You can in the college and the pro game, though. Again, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. Kind of wonder about this call. Are they trying to run it up here, Bo, or what? Or just trying to go for the two? It's complete to Quagan. There you see it. Corner of the end zone. So they tack on the two extra points. And we got a break in the action. Eight minutes and ten seconds to go in this football game. And the score now is Ledger running away with things. The Colonels 26 and the Fitch Falcons nothing. Numbers are on the Ledger side. And we've got these stats from Matt. Matt stats. Four minutes, 21 on the possession, 10 plays for 60 yards. Legend Colonels score on a pass, so now they've scored with the special teams, a pass, uh, a breakaway run, and a two-yard run, so that they've uh, shown a number of different looks today. Matt's stats, huh? Is that anything like a David Rack sack? Never mind. Short kick is to be fielded at the 45 by Twilly, and Twilly's hit immediately as he gets out to, to about the 40-yard line, and... Uh, some uh, extracurricular activities as Twilly apparently 
thought that he would sit after the uh, whistle, and now uh, the benches are emptying here, folks. And this is not the kind of thing you like to see in high school football as the game was uh, just totally out of reach and a little bit of an extra oomph on the tackle there. And things are getting ugly here in Ledger, folks. Not the kind of thing you like to see. Eight minutes and four seconds to go. Here in the third quarter, we'll be back right after this. We're back at uh, Ledger High School. Things have uh, calmed down. I'm sure there'll be some flags, maybe uh, some discussion as to uh, what will happen here, Bo. There was some discussion during uh, all the fisticuffs as to whether or not they're going to play the rest of this football game. And uh, under these kind of conditions, when tempers get that frayed, sometimes with a 26 to nothing lead, it may be the uh, better part of discretion here to call this one off right now. Well, I also want to make mention that the fans just below us uh, were also cooperating to try to make sure that the fighting that was taking place on the field was broken up and uh, yeah when you're getting whipped on the field uh, and I'm sure things are being said after the uh, you know after the tackles and whatnot to get the tempers flared up it's just unfortunate it happened but give credit to the officials and the coaching staff and the fans and also the players ultimately for uh, for stopping the altercation. Yeah, I gotta tell you what, I gotta give credit to some of the coaches because they don't have the padding that these players have on. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to get hit with one of those, uh, one of those uh, pads. You get to, you, you can get hit by a stray shoulder pad. Really, uh, get your bell rung. Down on the field, the uh, Fitch Falcon players settling back down, and the referees are still discussing what they're going to do about the situation. So they're huddling on the 40-yard line, uh, talking over the situation, probably trying to identify the mm -hmm. players uh, who were involved in the initial altercation to, to see whether or not, in fact, there will be some ejections from the ball game, and hopefully we'll uh, get the game restored and uh, be able to finish it. Well, they're coming to the sidelines. They're going to talk it over with head coach Mike Ellis and the Pitch Falcons here. They may be asking Mike, hey, if you want to play the rest of the game, fine. If not, we'll call it right here. That could be what they're discussing. It started, it all started uh, with uh, Richard Twilley, number 87, who returned the kick for the Fitch Falcons. Apparently, he was a little bit annoyed that he got roughed up a little bit. He felt that he was thrown to the turf after the whistle had blown, and uh, from there, things just escalated, and uh, that's uh, usually what happens. You know, we were watching a football game, all of a sudden, it turned into some hockey. It looked like hockey, and the ball is placed on the... 34 yard line so that uh, that's about where the the play did end mm -hmm. prior to the uh, to the fight breaking out or the hockey game breaking out yeah that's uh, number 66 Adam Scully power who's talking things over and then Richard Twilley as well with the referee and we're just about as much in the dark as you are here you see the score 26 to nothing 804 to go here in the fourth and final quarter if they decide to play this thing out, it'll be first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. That's where they have the football mark. But as you can see, the officials are still talking things over right in front of the Fitch Falcon bench. And last year when these two teams met, Ledger won that contest 21-14. to And on the far sideline, if we can get a, a wide-angle shot, uh, the two other referees are talking to uh, the Ledger Colonel people. So uh, while the discussion continues, we will remind you folks to uh, take home a movie from New England Home Video at 990 Pequannock Road in Groton, where the family can choose from over 10,000 movies, including the newest, hottest releases. They call them titles, don't they, in the video game? I believe they do. Titles. 10,000 titles. I like that. That sounds a little more snappy, you know, that alliteration, 10,000 titles. I was interested in seeing how the explanation went to the two, uh, two coaching staffs because the Fitch Falcon team seems to be under control. Legit Colonel uh, team now hearing what's going to be happening with the situation and uh, everything mm -hmm. seems to be under control at the current time. Once again, 8.04 to go in the football game. 26 to nothing, Ledger your score. And what all the discussion is about, in case you're just turning us on here, we had a Tempers flared and a bit of fisticuffs here with eight minutes to go on the ball game after uh, Richard Twilley returned a kick by the legend Colonel. Apparently felt that he had been roughed up a little bit too much and uh, things just escalated from there. 
So now we're going to find out exactly whether or not we're going to play the rest of this football game. It's within the uh, referee's discretion. So we've got unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams. And we did have uh, some players ejected. I don't, uh, don't know who at this point, but uh, we did have some ejections. Does that carry uh, an ejection in high school? Does that carry any kind of a, does it have any carryover into uh, future games? In other words, uh, could they possibly suspend the player for a game? Uh, not in football, it does in soccer, however. If you get a red card in soccer, not only are you ex uh, thrown out of that ball game, but you're not allowed to participate in the next ball game. But mm -hmm. I would think that it would then be up to the athletic director and also the head coach, and in this particular case, uh, in both schools' uh, case, uh, Mike Ellis, uh, head coach and athletic director at Fitch High School, Fitch Senior High, and Bill Mignault, the athletic director and head football coach at Ledger that they would deal with their players uh, you know, as they deem necessary during the course of the week and also mm -hmm. uh, into next week's ballgame. But it might be a good, uh, we don't see a lot of fights in high school football anyway, but it might be a, a good uh, deterrent maybe to add that rule in CIC uh, high school sports to you know, anybody that fights would get to thrown out of the following game. Kind of maybe a deterrent, no? Well, it is a deterrent and uh, may have uh, mentioned it during the because halftime. Getting kicked, let's face it, getting kicked out of this ball game is really meaningless for either team. Foolish at this stage of the game. It's uh, 8.04 left in the ball game and Ledger comfortable 26 nothing lead so that, you know, why bother? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Yep. It looks like we're going to finish this one out. There's the uh, Fitch Falcon uh, sidelines. Brave fans. Just uh, ignoring these uh, atrocious weather conditions and coming on out. Actually, it's not too bad right now. The rain has stopped. It's uh, clearing compared no, to what we had. No, but you should have been here 15, 20 minutes ago. No, first and half was really horrendous. Wind is still kicked up, though. If you look down at the scoreboard and the flag, the wind mm -hmm. is still blowing uh, in a northerly direction. It's right behind the Falcons, right to the Falcons' back. So, uh, hey, what the heck? They may air it out here and try to at least get on the scoreboard and break this uh, scoreless deadlock. There you see the flag. Rippling in the breeze, and what do we got here? Some more flags. Alleged Colonel Defender offside. That'll okay. Cost the Colonel's five. So it'll be first and five now. Seven minutes and 43 seconds to go. We'll be taking a timeout after this play. Alert the folks in the truck. We'll get this first and five play in, and then we'll take a quick timeout. Here's Lowry. 7.30 to go, as you see the clock winding down on this one. The uh, final determination, the final outcome, not in jeopardy at all. The handoff to Johns, and he picks up a first down as he's across the midfield stripe. That's Bobby Willard, excuse me, for a first down. So let's uh, take a quick break. 7.21 to go here in the fourth and final quarter of the score. Ledger 26, and the Fitch Falcons nothing. 6.17 to go. There you see it. 26 to nothing. Ledger Colonels leading this one here in the quagmire that is Ledger High School after the rains. Things have calmed down now. We had to, boy, it's been stormy in all senses of the word today. We had to, uh, monsoon conditions earlier. Then we had a little bit of a fight breakout. Now we've got an injured uh, colonel on the field. Can't identify the number just yet. But it's been a wild and woolly morning here in Ledger certainly has and the wind is still kicking up the wind is at the back of the Fitch Falcon offense so they're down by 26 points so that when we get our play resume look for the Falcons to go to the air okay got to pick up some quick points I'll be looking and as you can see the injured uh, colonel can't really pick up who it is just yet it might be Gorman I saw the five 53 53 is uh, let's see. Cliff Robinson isn't it Cliff Robinson 53 Clint Robinson, yes. Clint. Clint. Not Cliff. Cliff is in the booth. Clint, Cliff, and Clint. Cliff is in the booth. Clint right. is on the field. That was number 53. That's right. We don't want to get him confused now. True. All right, it's third down, about three yards to go, and the whole right side of that Falcon offensive line a little bit over anxious as they moved, and that'll cost the Falcons five. Unless I'm seeing things. It was Murphy and uh, Randy Wade jumping a little early. 6.10 to go. And they'll march it back five. Illegal procedure against the Falcons. 
it's been a long morning for the Fitch Falcons. They have had virtually nothing go their way. And this is when Jim Hodges would call it garbage time. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Jim Hodges? Jim Hodges. Sure. What have I got to lose? Of course I remember Jim Hodges. New London Day, sports editor. Okay. Several years back. Oh, yes. I Byline. Oh, yes. I New Jersey, that. Byline, Philadelphia, Byline, Got Foxborough. It. Got it. I remember Jim. He was a nice southern boy. Georgia. Okay, a Georgia peach. On the cross buck, the handoff goes to Willard. Some nice running room up near the first down sticks for Bobby Willard. Uh, it's going to be uh, depend on where they mark the football. 5.35 to go. I tell you what, Bobby's an excitable kid. He's trailing by 26 points and picks up a first down, and he's happy. You'd never know that they're behind by 26. He's all fired up. Give him credit. Hanging in there. And they'll bring the sticks out to measure this one. 5.35 to go in the football game. The Colonel's leading it 26 to nothing, so they're well on the way. You can probably chalk up victory number four, and here's the measurement. I can't tell. Can you? Ah, Just there short. There you go. That much. And Matt tells us that's only the second time this morning that we've had a measurement with the sticks. Okay. I'm glad you clarified that. Uh, one was a first down, one wasn't. So we're 50-50 on the sticks. Okay, now that'll be a fourth down then for the Fitch Falcons. This is the outcome of this one not in jeopardy. It's just a question of saving face now. The Falcons would like to get on the scoreboard. Let's see. Colonel say they've got the ball, Sam. On the quarterback sneak, it was Lowry, but I don't know if he got the. I don't oh. know if he got the first down. I don't even know if he uh, was able to hang on the football, but they say he did. So it's a Fitch Falcon first down. That's about the first thing that they've had a break that they've had to go their way all afternoon or all morning. Afternoon now. Actually, it's evening. Well, yes. Through the magic of videotape, folks. It's actually 12.30 our time and, what, about 10.30 their time. Mm -hmm. Different time zone. Yeah. Here's the handoff to Johns. Johns, good running room. Finally stacked up near the 35-yard line. Johns has that good quickness through the line. What he's got to do is cut to his right or cut to his left because he's uh, running into uh, the secondary. Not only that, uh, something that we uh, saw last week, he runs upright, and he doesn't have that real body lean. He runs straight upright, doesn't get kicked over at all. And, uh, of course, when you run upright and you got that tall body, it's easy to, to pick him off and knock him back. Built like a wide receiver. Yep. There's a look at the field. Getting a little muddy in the middle. That's about the worst part of the football field to be in right now for the Falcons. The handoff goes to the up man. The big fullback takes it down close to another first down. That's Bobby Willard again. I have to think that that Colonel defense is looking for the Falcons to go to the air, which is probably explaining why the Falcons running game is now opening up a little bit. Yeah. And I'm kind of surprised that the legend Colonels are keeping their first string defense on the field with a 26 to nothing lead. There you see the Fitch Falcon bench. The sidelines just about as uh, <laughs> ugly <laughs> as the playing field right now. And it's amazing how in athletics the statistics work, and we'll talk to you about that after this play. Third down and one. The handoff to Johns, and he's not going to get there as he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Tom Tchaikovsky, the nose tackle, made the stop. Well, that's uh, helping out, but a loss on the play of about one. It'll bring up fourth down and two. Clock rolling with 3.22 to go on this one. The Colonels will be 4-0 and after uh, this morning's action. The Fitch Falcons 2-3. and three. And as we mentioned, the Falcons have won, lost in one, lost in one. They're losing this week, so I pity, their opponents. Week. I pity their opponents next week. That's right. Who they play? We'll find out for Mrs. Teague. Okay. Fourth and two. Big play here. It's uh, Bobby Willard once again. And it's going to depend on where they mark the football, but I believe he picked up the first down. Will they play there? Will the cross. 254 to go. They did pick up the first down. 26 to nothing, the Colonels. And then you see the flag in the background. It's been worse, believe me. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain, a lot of activity, and some extracurricular activity. So and we've seen it all here. And we're told that the Fitch Falcons will take on Wilbur Cross next week, so uh, mm -hmm. I pity them. 
Will that game be at home or away? Maybe up in, uh, we'll be in Groton, I'm told. Dorfield. Dorfield. Hand off to uh, a new ball player, Jason Teague, into the game for the first time. He carries for a couple. Not too much yardage up front as that uh, right side of the defensive line, Jason Gorman and Dave Rack, who had a couple of sacks earlier. Rack sacks. Yeah. And I think if I were playing Wilbur Cross, I'd rather play them in football and not basketball. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. They are usually talent laden in the round ball category. Second down, still about 10 yards to go for the Falks. Just inside the 35, the handoff goes to, is that Johns again? Nope, it's Bobby Willard. This time he loses yardage. And we're inside of two minutes to go. As you take a look at the legend Colonel sidelines, they're uh, nice and comfy cozy. Thank you very much. We'll take the victory. And they're drying off a little bit from this morning's earlier heavy downfall. Looks like a few of them have been through a war as we pan the sideline. Well, those trenches were awful ugly. A lot of mud and grime. This is the kind of game that uh, reminds you of the old time football. You know, no carpet here, folks. Third down and 12. One 12 to go. Back to throw Lowry. Loops it over the middle, picked off by the Colonels. And he may go all the way. This is going to seal it. The Colonels, number 49, is Kevin Ken Polk gets down inside the 10 yard line. And the only reason why he didn't score a touchdown is because he's a big old linebacker and <laughs> just didn't have enough speed. Kind of reminds me of somebody I used to know who played linebacker. It would have taken me about a calendar day to get that far. But you know what? He's just as happy having run the ball back that far. I'm sure a little bit happy if he got into the end zone, but uh, yeah. as you uh, mentioned, he was kind of running out of uh, running out of gas. Running out of gas. Yeah. Well, that kind of puts a cap on it, don't it, for the Falcons? I mean, when things go wrong, when it rains, it pours in more ways than one. Yes, and we have now less than one minute to play. 56 seconds all together, and this one will be over, mercifully enough, for the Fitch Falcons. It's, uh, it's been a long, long ball game for them. And I believe we're going to see the Stormtroopers. Yes, indeed. Alleged Colonels. Second string offense onto the field for the first time. Number 12 in at uh, quarterback. And it's time to go to the old roster chiefs, folks. Number 12 is Steve Waltz. I believe he'll be a quarterback. And it's, a chance, it's a chance for the second string club to uh, see what they can do. Now they're moving the ball back five yards. What is it, the delay of the game call? So they move them back five. It'll be uh, first down and goal from the 10-yard uh, line, right on the 10. You see the ball straddling the chalk. Excuse me, 15-yard line. And the second string offense. It is uh, Steve Waltz on at quarterback. Turns and hands it off to number 46. Scott Robbins and a short gain as the clock rocks and rolls down to 15 seconds and this one just about history. Bo, any uh, final thoughts on this one? Uh, we just want to uh, congratulate both teams well, on a good effort. You see the clock coming down. Been fun being back on the, uh, on the air with you and we look forward to being back here next week with uh, East Lyman Ledger. There you go. That's the end of the ball game. All of the points on the wrong side if you're a Fitch Falcon fan. If, uh, if not, if you're one of those folks uh, that are rooting for the Colonels, they remain undefeated here. They survive not only the uh, attack of the Fitch Falcons, but an attack from old man, uh, old man, old mother nature, as it were, as we had uh, stormy conditions all morning long, uh, cleared up a little bit this afternoon in the uh, latter part of the ball game. But for the most part, it was a question of alleged Colonels just taking things over early. They controlled the line of scrimmage really got it done offensively a couple of big plays and uh, once they built up the big margin there was nothing that the uh, falcons could do to catch them and it's good to see that the coaching staffs do have things under control both teams out there now exchanging greetings at the end of the ball game tough ball game for both teams colonels win at 26 nothing and uh, looks like hockey night in canada down there doesn't it yes it does <laughs> okay that's our ball game folks once again the final score the legend colonels 26 the fitch falcons nothing We'll be back with our post-game show right after this.
This game has been brought to you by New England Home Video, located at 990 Poquanic Road in Groton, where you can choose from over 10,000 movie selections. And from G. Willikers. If you're dining out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, try G. Willikers, Southeastern Connecticut's most popular eatery. Featuring an extensive 16-page menu with daily specials, casual dining, and reasonable prices. It'll make you say, G. Willikers, Route 184 in Groton. We'll have a post-game show, more of the 1990 Fall Sports Series, after these messages.